Contender Regime Boxing checking back in with y'all, man. What's going on? Floyd Mayweather Jr. and Andre Ward have both been inducted into the International Boxing Hall of Fame. It's a beautiful thing. I'm pretty sure everybody knew this was coming. First ballot Hall of Famers, two of the greatest fighters to ever lace up gloves. Um, I just wanted to talk about these guys, man, real quick, you know, just to you know, shed some light and get these guys their flowers, man. These two of my favorite favorite fighters of all time. Two of the 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 guys that that really from a fan's perspective and just a student of boxing, just watching and learning and just trying to pick up on the sweet science and just really learning the ins and outs from these guys doing it on a masterful level. And these are the two of the guys probably I would say in my time watching boxing, because, you know, you got guys from the past, like Sugar Ray Leonard, Sugar Ray Robinson, like from way, way, way back. But, you know, me from my generation coming up, I was watching Floyd Mayweather fight live. I was watching Andre Ward fight live, you know, and these are these are the guys that I really uh, was able to just really study and like see like, damn, like this is. This is the difference between being good, being really good, and being great. Like these these dudes really separated themselves as far as skill in the ring. Floyd Mayweather is the most skilled pure boxer to ever live. I'm not talking about who hit the hardest. I'm not talking about who got the fastest hands. I'm not talking about who's the most most athletic. I'm not talking about anybody that just excels in one category. I'm talking about overall boxing, pure skill from a pugilistic standpoint, just from the foundation and the fundamental, you know, essence of boxing. Floyd Mayweather Jr. is the best that I've ever seen. When you look at the combination of skills and attributes that he bring to the table, the intellect, the ring IQ, a master in the ring, always in control, the the phenomenal and flawless defense, so hard to hit. And when you do hit him, he got a great chin. You know, never touched the canvas officially, never been on the on the canvas. Never you never seen him on his back. You know what I'm saying? You seen him hurt versus sugar versus Sugar Shane Mosley. Came back, won damn near every round after that. You know what I'm saying? He got hurt twice in that round. I believe it was the second round. He got hurt twice, weathered the storm, came back. That's the, that's the mental game right there to be able to do that, the mental game and the heart. You feel me? You look at the hand speed. You look at the, the punch placement, the accuracy, the combination, the distance control, the footwork. You know what I'm saying? The, the strategy. The, the mental gymnastics that he played with you outside the ring before you even get in the fight, you are already fighting the uphill battle trying to beat this guy mentally. And then when you get in the ring, shit, you got to find a way to, to put everything that you game planned on in training camp into effect in a fight. And it always looked different when you actually in the ring with him. That's why you see a lot of guys that I can beat Floyd. I want to fight him. He don't hit hard. You know, I can beat him, it, you know, but when they get in the ring, though, it's a totally different story. You know, Floyd Mayweather, man, that's, that dude was phenomenal. You know, it's, it's really, I can't say enough about his skill level, his dedication to the craft. You go back to Pretty Boy Floyd when he fought Gennaro Hernandez, Diego Corrales, Angel Manfredi, you know what I'm saying? Uh, e Emmanuel Augustus, Chop Chop Corley. I mean, this dude was having wars with these guys. Like, go back and watch him versus Chop Chop Corley. Go watch him versus Emmanuel Augustus. A lot of people try to make it seem like Floyd just this guy that prance around the ring, scared to get hit. But they don't talk about the wars that he had. Like, go back and watch Floyd Mayweather versus Emmanuel Augustus. 
the drunken master. Go back and watch. Floyd was in a, a bloody war with that guy. Went toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. I'm talking about pure class, pure boxing ability, but it was a dog fight. Like that's the that was the type of that was the classic um example of a tactical dog fight. You know what I'm saying? Like fight in the trenches, but doing it intelligently. You feel me? Like Floyd Mayweather was different, man. Just a complete fighter all the way around. I've never seen a more complete fighter than Floyd Mayweather Jr. My favorite performance from him, and this is the crazy thing. Out of all that shit I just named, out of all that stuff I just talked about in his previous years, the money, the uh, pretty boy Floyd, his most impressive performance to me to date was versus Canelo Alvarez. At the age of 36 years old, almost about to be 37, 36 years old, fighting a 23-year-old guy, unified champion that everybody was scared of. Everybody was saying was supposed to be this guy, this monster. You know, people was begging Floyd to fight Canelo. You know what I'm saying? Oh, Canelo, you don't want to fight Canelo. He going to beat you. He going to knock you out. Man, Floyd got in there and styled on him and made him look like an amateur at the age of 36. And he stayed in the pocket with Canelo and Canelo couldn't do shit. He couldn't touch him. Floyd literally stayed in front of this man and picked him off. You know what I'm saying? Made him look foolish. That And that was one of the most complete boxing performances that I ever seen, period, by anybody, but especially from Floyd. You know what I'm saying? And... That's to today. And I mean, there's been so many memorable performances from Floyd Mayweather. You know, you go the Maidana, uh, Floyd versus Maidana. The first fight was fun as hell because people, a lot of people didn't know what they was watching in the ring uh, when that fight went down. You know what I'm saying? Everybody just seeing all the, the crazy shit that Maidana was doing. He even tried to pick Floyd up. You know what I'm saying? He, he need Floyd and shit. You know, he was head button, he was doing all type of shit, but Floyd was, man, Floyd was blocking all that shit. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, another one of my favorite performances was Diego Corrales. Knocked him down like five or six times. Diego Corrales was a killer. He was like 32 and 0, 33 and 0. He was a knockout artist. Artist beating everybody ass. You know what I'm saying? Undefeated. And Floyd went in there and took his soul. You feel me? Um, Andre Ward, you know, I got to talk about SOG, Andre Ward, man. This guy also one of the most complete fighters that I ever seen. And he got a lot. I'm pretty sure that and he'll tell you, um, I'm pretty sure that he took a lot from Floyd as far as, you know, studying his game and learning different things from him and, you know, working with, with Virgil Hunter. You know, he added his own little sauce to the game. You know what I'm saying? And you know, Andre Ward is one of the best inside fighters that I've ever seen. A guy that Andre Ward is one of the most tactical inside fighters that you will ever see in the sport of boxing. And I like Andre Ward because he not only can he box beautifully from the outside and use a jab and make you look like an amateur. You know, this is a, a gold medalist that we're talking about. You know what I'm saying? Make you look like an amateur. Make you look like you don't even belong in the ring with him. But he also got that dog in him. He got that dog factor and that killer mentality. Like, motherfucker, you not bigger than me. You not badder than me. And you ain't finna dominate shit. You know what I'm saying? Go back to the Chad Dawson fight. You know, Chad Dawson, you know, he was up in weight. He, he came down for that fight. Versus Andre Ward and, you know, he was talking big shit like he was just going to dog out Andre Ward. What Andre Ward do? Shit, I'm going to fight you on the inside and just, I'm going to just beat your ass. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it so uncomfortable for you in there. I'm talking about in the clinches. I'm hitting you in the clinch. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to the body. You feel me? I'm hitting you with the uppercuts in the clinch. Then from the outside, I can, I can outbox you from the outside and use my range and distance. Man, Andre Ward was, was a beast, man. And I mean, you. I really couldn't see anybody beating either of these two guys, man. Andre Ward, my favorite performance from him was probably the Chad Dawson fight. I liked the Mikael Kessler fight. Uh, Mikael Kessler fight, the Super Six. He went and won the whole Super Six, and that was probably the last actual real tournament that we had in the sport of boxing, where you actually found out who was the best 
in a division. You know what I'm saying? He cleaned out the whole 168. Couldn't nobody fuck with him at 168. Um, I really would have, I really wanted to see him get that Triple G fight, but Triple G didn't want no smoke. You know what I'm saying? Triple G was at 160 beating up on Kroger cashiers and dollar store workers and shit like that. You know, uh, the pay, the garbage man that, that stopped by, stopped by the back of the pay less and pick up the garbage and shit. You know, that's who, uh, Triple G was fighting. But soon as Andre Ward was like, shit, what's up? You feel me? Let's get it popping. He didn't want no smoke. He couldn't come up to 168 after being at 160 for 30 years fighting. Lord, who knows? You know what I'm saying? But he didn't want no smoke with, with Andre Ward, but he's supposed to be this killer. Okay. You feel me? I, I really wanted him to get that fight. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, uh, he would. I feel like he would have stopped Triple G. He would have beat Triple G. Bad, you feel me? Like I don't, I don't see anything that Triple G could have did against Andre Ward. He would have killed him. You know what I'm saying? And um, you know, I also like when Andre Ward said he couldn't get no big fights at 168. Did nobody want to? Uh, didn't want no smoke with him. He went up and fought Kovalev when Kovalev was the crusher. When Kovalev was the killer, he went up there first fight at no uh, first fight he fought Joe Smith, I believe, and then. Second fight, he he jumped straight in that water and fought Kovalev. You dig what I'm saying? Fought Kovalev, got knocked down one time. What did he do after that? He Just like how Floyd got hurt versus Sugar Shane Mosley in the second round, Andre Ward, get, he get dropped by Kovalev. What did he do? Come back and dominate the whole fight. You know what I'm saying? Dominate the whole fight. Crafty, fighting on the inside, boxing from the outside, using angles, using his jab, you know, and, and, and sticking you, you know, in your stomach to the solar plexus with the with the jab and the straight right. You know what I'm saying? Just making it tough for you, putting you in positions that you don't want to be. And that's what boxing is about. That's what the sweet science is about. It's dominating. It's about putting you in a position that you don't want to be in and me controlling the situation. That's what the sweet science is about. And Andre Ward you know, went in there, dominated Kovalev for the remainder of that fight after he got dropped. Then in the, in the rematch with Kovalev, beat him up so bad, Kovalev quit. Talking about he was getting low blowed. He was just getting toe up from the flow up. You feel me? Andre Ward was hitting him everywhere on his neck, on his back, on his temple, in his kneecaps. He was hitting him everywhere. Kovalev just didn't know what to do. He, did, he didn't know Andre Ward was going to come back blasting like that. You know what I'm saying? And shit, I thought Kovalev was going to retire after that. He should have, because after that, he ain't been the same. Kovalev ain't been the same since. You dig what I'm saying? So, you know, man, I, I had to make a video about this and really talk about these guys getting inducted into the Hall of Fame as well-deserved. Two of the greatest fighters that have ever graced the ring, ever put on gloves. And, man, you know, um, this young generation that's coming up in boxing, man, I feel like we... You know, we in good hands. We got um we got some some really great young fighters that's coming up and you know, I I wish and hope that these guys would be half the fighters of, of Floyd Mayweather and, and Andre Ward. You dig what I'm saying? But y'all let me know what y'all think down in the comments, man. How y'all feel about these brothers going to the Hall of Fame and you know, who y'all think next, man. You know what I'm saying? Contender regime boxing. I holler at y'all boys, man.